Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this next question wants us to find the relative maxima, the relative minima. Best way to find the relative maxima is you're looking for the y value at the top of a hill. The best way to find the relative minima is you're looking for the y values at the bottom of a valley. Increasing, decreasing, and constant we've been over before. The important thing is to always answer them without using a bracket in interval notation. Now, when I look at this graph, what I did is I put the arrows on because it was important to know that they continued. And the first thing they told us was this was the ordered pair negative 7, negative 1. But I also notice it's a hill, right? Like it's a, it's a little hill. Well, at the little hill is where you find the y value that is your relative maximum value. So the y value here is negative 1. So my relative maximum is the number negative 1. Not the ordered pair, just the y value. Relative minimum or minima, if there's more than one valley, but there's only one valley here, the relative minima, in this case minimum, is the number negative 9 because that's the y value in the bottom of my valley. Now, even though it's not essential for you to know in 1105, a number of you are going on into higher courses. They may later ask you, what's the absolute maximum? Well, this graph doesn't have an absolute maximum, and the reason is because you can tell the y value keeps getting larger is what that arrow shows me. And this graph also has no absolute minimum because the y value keeps getting smaller. But a relative maximum or minimum are basically high points or low points along the graph, but they're not necessarily going to be the highest y values for the entire graph. That's why they're called relative. It's like relative to that neighborhood but not over the entire uh, domain of the graph. Okay, increasing, decreasing, and constant. Well, let's see. Always answered in terms of x. I'm going to put a little dotted line here, and that is the line x equals negative 7. I'm going to put a dotted line here, and that is the line x equals negative 3. Okay? because, of course, x is negative 7 there, and x is negative 3 here. And those dotted vertical lines help me see where my graph is changing from increasing to decreasing. Now, one thing I hope you can see with this graph is there's no place where the graph is just completely level, you know, that it's not, it's not flatlined. So where it says constant, we're going to put never. It's never constant. Okay, increasing, decreasing, we're going to answer over the intervals that we see. This interval is increasing, this little piece is decreasing, and then the rest of the graph is increasing. So let's answer increasing. I'm scanning from left to right, so I'm coming from negative infinity, right? I'm coming from negative infinity, and then I hit the x value of negative 7. And that's my breaking point. So it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 7 with a paren. Again, no bracket. The graph is dropping between these two x values. And one the, the, again, if we read from left to right, it's decreasing from negative 7 to negative 3. We're scanning from left to right. So it's decreasing from negative 7 to negative 3. And then from this point on, okay, my x value is negative 3 and the graph is increasing. So that means as I walk out on the x-axis to infinity, my graph, you know, I'm still increasing. So where did it start? It started at negative, past negative 3 and went out to infinity. So we come up here and we put union negative 3, comma, infinity. And those are our answers.